what made you then what made you kind of switch then on to the the more the business side um of the music industry yeah so dj wise i never really kicked my career off uh like i said i got a few gigs and then i sort of like hung my headphones up i lost motivation for it and i thought look it's not gonna happen for me um and i just resigned to just going out partying and clubbing every weekend and i had loads of crap jobs never really could hold a job down um and i got into i started i i started i started going to football games right this is if I, if you really want to know the story so i started going to football games and i was a Leeds united fan and i got involved with this sort of football casual scene mm -hmm. um hooligans people might want to call them Oh, and okay. I started going, for, I went for years to these football games and I, I started buying this, uh, I started buying and selling the CCTV footage from these football games. So, and I built a website and it was, the website was worldwide and I, I bought and traded and sold all this football casual sort of um, DVDs, uh, documentaries and all that sort of stuff. So in, in the meantime of stopping DJing, I learned how to build an online business and I, I, I was quite successful at one point I was doing like five grand a week. And what I learned doing that was I was in, I was involved in all these online communities. Um, cause every football team had the casual, uh, forum mm -hmm. back then it, there were forums, angel fire and CG, cjb.net were the main ones. So from scratch, I learned how to use these platforms as I learned how to video edit and I learned how to do graphics. And, um, and I, looking back as well, I, I used to outsource my design to Romania and this was like 20, 20 years ago, nearly, um, about 15, 15, 16 years ago. And so I was outsourcing then before, uh, everyone else was outsourcing Upwork and stuff that became popular. Uh, and also I was utilizing the forums to build a network and I was also paying the forum owners to put banner adverts in the forums. So I literally had the whole of the football casual world boxed off or as everywhere, like omnipresent, I like to say nowadays, mm -hmm. but, and it, it was the number one football casual site in the world, number one, Google, everything. Um, and then, so that was, that was sort of like a, I was still going clubbing, but I'd sort of like lost my passion for the music myself, like playing music. Mm -hmm. But then through some friends I was hanging around with at the time was we we're actually having, I remember the time we were having a party back at my house after a club. And I was at the top of my steps, as you do, you just sat hanging around in random places on the floor in your house. Mm -hmm. And there were about four of us sat at the top of my steps, all just chatting. Uh, this was like Sunday. We've been out all night. And, um, this girl, Serena, was saying to me, she said, um, it's my 18th birthday, or it might have been the 21st, 18th or 21st. And um, she said, I've got this, 18, uh, this birthday party at my local club, and the DJ's pulled out. He's, I'm like, why, why is he pulled out? And he called Ali Scott, the guy. And um, he pulled out the DJ gig. And the reason was he'd never played in front of a crowd before, so he sort of like he bottled it, if you know what I mean. And mm -hmm. um, so she asked if I wanted to play so I'd just been to Ibiza about a month before and I'd bought some vinyl. I'd sort of like the new electro sound was just starting mm -hmm. and um, like mid 2000s it something like that, 2004 or five. And I thought I got back into the music again. So I bought some vinyl um, and I started playing it again at home, just messing about. And I've still got all my old vinyl. I've got hundreds and hundreds of vinyl in storage. And she asked me to play this party. So I said, oh, I've got all this new vinyl. Yeah, let's do it. And um, so I played this party in Otley. It's a little town in Leeds. And uh, it was a working man's club back room. So like proper yep. Yorkshire working man's club style. But the, so the family were there, um, even grandmas and granddads and stuff. And I'm playing like old school baseline garage, trance, all sorts of mixture. But then all the parents and stuff went off and all the, all the, and there were quite a lot of people there. They're all like young people and it, it went off and it went on till about one in the morning and I was meant to come off and I, I was getting ready to finish, but everyone had a whip round and they, they begged me to stay on and there were all sorts of stuff in there. There were money and, um, other, other things. things. <laughs> so I, I managed to stay on for another two hours. They, they had a lock in, 
at the working man's club and it were like a, it were like a rave it was brilliant and um it sort of like gave me the buzz back and um playing to a crowd and i've always wanted to play to a crowd that's all i really wanted so i um the girl whose birthday it was worked at a wine bar and she asked the owner of the wine bar if we, we both said let's do a party together because that town there were like 100 people there and everyone were just off it dancing proper really really good crowd and i thought there's no nightclubs in this town so we need to put a party on so she approached a a, a boss at the wine bar or cox wine bar at the time and we managed to we, we've got a book in to do a saturday night and um this this room we usually reserve for line dancing classes and stuff they never had a rave on and um so i i was i had to learn how to promote and Obviously, because she was local, she already had a load of people in that town. So we we, we had tickets printed for a fiver, proper tickets with yeah. holographic on and stuff. <laughs> and um, she was selling tickets locally, but I were online promoting as well. So I learned how to use MySpace and um, I were on MySpace. I managed to build a big following on MySpace. I found all these tools that you could use for uh, automation, like posting flyers on all your friends' walls and stuff like that. Uh, friend adding tools so I got really geeky on all that sort of stuff so because I was already in the like online forum world due to the football websites that I used to run um, I was I, 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 run, I went into learning online basically I knew the value of online mm-hmm. and, um, and my space was just taking off so I managed to build the decks up on a grand piano because it wasn't set up for um it wasn't set up like for a nightclub. We had to hire everything. We had to bring our own sound system. We had to bring our own deck. We put the decks on the piano and uh, turntables. And mm-hmm. a couple of my mates DJ'd and it was absolutely amazing um, until a big group of travellers came down and tried storming the doors and all the locals started fighting with them outside. It was just like, yeah, it was, it was chaos. But the night was really good. The vibe was really good until that happened. Um, and then the guy... The guy um, didn't want to do it again, obviously. He says, I'm not having that sort of crowd in my wine bar. Um, so that was, that was the end of the first one. We called it Filth, by the way. So, and then I got in talks of a nightclub in Wakefield, which was a quite a big town. And uh, they wanted me to move the brand there after we've only done one night. So I decided to give it a go. And I booked a guy called Mickey Slim. Um, I, I saw he, he did that jump around remix track and uh, he's actually coming on my podcast in a couple of weeks and um, he was like bubbling up and I managed to book him for like 500 pound but, but the downside was he was playing at four in the morning so I saw that he had three other gigs in the north and I just put a cheeky offer in I said look I'll put him on at four o'clock um, I know he's in I think you're in Derby or somewhere or somewhere nearish. <laughs> And I managed to get him 500 quid. So at the time, it, it was to the Leeds crowd. It was massive. It was, it was sell out, it like Kiss the Funk. Used to book him in Leeds and he'd sell out Kiss the Funk. Um, but I put him on in Wakefield, which was still in the catchment area of Leeds, but we were further enough away that it didn't um, annoy Kiss the Funk and didn't get into any uh, agreements, what they'd had to have him exclusive in Leeds, for example. So I managed to get him on Wakefield. So the whole of Leeds literally descended on Wakefield. And we sold that night out. We sold 650. Um, they stopped letting people in on the door. The bar was dry by like one in the morning. There were actually no alcohol left in the club by one in the morning. They'd never, ever seen the club as busy since it had been open in 15 years, something like that. So wow. we got off to quite a good start. Um, and that was all due to building the MySpace following and networking well, choosing residents that also had a good following that would also work for the night. It weren't particularly famous but they had a good local following Mm -hmm. um so the first night we're off to a flying start straight away my second booking was uh will bailey who's now called low stepper who's quite big um and i think we had ben macklin richard dinsdale and kate lawler so we already had a few big hitters on from the start and then after six months i decided that like wakefield was a bit grim and crappy and i wanted to move it to leeds because it was like if you've been to wakefield it's full of street fights and it's not Mm -hmm. a a town in yorkshire and um it's not a city so like leeds obviously is the coolest place up north for nightlife and i approached the mink club 
I phoned up, as you do. You just phoned the club and asked them if they've got any spare nights. And I spoke to Val, the owner, and she goes, ah, just so happens that as from yesterday, we've got the second Saturday of the month available starting in September. And she goes, you can have that if you want. I'm like, really? It was that easy? I'm like, fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> I've got like one of the best, most iconic clubs in the, in the, in the country. And it literally took me two minutes on a phone and I bagged a night. Uh, a regular Saturday as well, and um, and then and then we sold that out um, because um, we just I just in the meantime as well I'd gone for my first season in Ibiza working and I was running the night from Ibiza flying back to Wakefield to run the night, so I was quite um, I adapted quite well to freelance work, mm-hmm. um, freelance work, remote work. Sorry, mm-hmm. so and. I was in Ibiza, and while I was in Ibiza, I started working for the Zoo Project, selling tickets on the street, and I soon realized that I can't be asked walking the streets like everyone else, and I started building a list of people coming over on holiday, so I was in contact with people on MySpace and Facebook, and then getting spreadsheets full of people, what dates they were coming, how many were coming, how many tickets I could sell them, and yeah, so I was doing that while flying back to England and uh, running these nights, and then so by the end of the summer, when we relaunched in Leeds, we'd already built a big worker following up in in Ibiza. It lived in Leeds as well. A lot of a lot there were a lot of Northerners in mm-hmm. in Ibiza. A lot of Manchester, Leeds. So we'd built a good following in Ibiza as well, and then so that obviously helped us kick off the uh, the launch in Leeds. And then it just went on from there, and uh, we we managed to bag successful residences at Sankey's. Ministry of Sound in London, Rainbow in Birmingham. So we had like a, we had about three or four parties around the UK every month. Uh, the highlight booking, I managed to book Faithless Live um, because I would not accept no for an answer. Um, and I went on and on and on for nearly six months emailing their agent and just getting nowhere and nowhere. And I would never stop until I booked them. And then I managed to get them for a, a live gig in Leeds where we sold out the O2 Arena. So that's probably the highlight of my booking career as a as a as a as a promoter and and i've i've run my own festivals off the back of that i run my own festival in leeds called field trip festival so all of Uh, all of this is really showing that you were a learning how to build how to use digital tools and how to use online businesses to to be grow an audience and how important it is to grow those audiences and reach out to them um and all the, all the time doing it in the music industry and the creative industry, which is, you know, typically one of the harder areas to do it in. Quickly, like you, earlier on, you, you had the um, online forum where you're tra- trading the CCTVs and stuff. You had that business. And then you had this business. What, where are they now? Like, why, why did you move on from those? <laughs> so the football business, I got raided by the police. Okay, done. <laughs> <laughs> but the story of that is the um, I had I'd already booked in. It's sort of like every time every, there's a chapter in my every time there's a chapter closes in my life, the other one overlaps a little bit and just mm-hmm. opens. So my opening night of filth was two weeks after that happened, or two weeks before. I can't remember. It's quite vague, but. I was trying to get out of that anyway. It, it mm-hmm. was something that earned me money, but I didn't enjoy the, the cult. I, I'd grown out of it, basically. Yeah. And so I saw this new potential, which was something I'd always wanted to do. Because when I was 18, I wrote a business plan. I've got the business plan there. This came with all this stuff from my ex-girlfriend. Mm-hmm. And the night was called Greed, and it was a hard house night in Leeds. So I'd put this business plan together. I pitched it to the venue. I wrote it down. I, everything visualized it. It was there. But it never, it never happened. So... Fast forward, like five years later, um, I, it was happening, and I was like, "This is what I've always wanted to do. I've always wanted to DJ to big crowds, yep. and I can do that now through my own night." 